drive down on five and one. We used to do it there. How are you, sir? Good. You doing all right? Yeah. That's what I like to hear. January 12, 2016, and we're opening the meeting of the Citrus County School Board. Uh, Ms. Bryant will do opening exercises and the pledge. Right. Good afternoon. Back when I used to teach school many years ago, I did poems. I try to do an appropriate poem when it's my turn. So this is called Life's Tug of War, and the author is unknown. I like it. Life can seem ungrateful and not always kind. Life can pull at your heartstrings and play with your mind. Life can be blissful and happy and free. Life can put beauty in the things that you see. Life can place challenges right at your feet. Life can make good of the hardships we meet. Life can overwhelm you and make your head spin. Life can reward those determined to win. Life can be hurtful and not always fair. Life can surround you with people who care. Life clearly does offer its ups and downs. Life days can bring you both smiles and frowns. Life teaches us to take the good with the bad. Life is a mixture of happy and sad. So, Take the life that you have and give it your best. Think positive, be happy, let God do the rest. Take the challenges that life has laid at your feet. Take pride and be thankful for each one you meet. To yourself, give forgiveness if you stumble and fall. Take each day that is dealt to you and give it your all. Take the love that you're given and return it with care. Have faith that when needed, it will always be there. Take time to find beauty in things that you see. Take life's simple pleasures and let them set your heart free. The idea is simple, to even the score as you're met and faced with life's tug of war. And I have a quote from the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We're coming up on his day. Intelligence plus character. That is the goal of true education. Will you stand for the pledge? I 
pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lessons to be learned. Ms. Bryant, thank you so much. Uh, can I have a uh, motion for the adoption of the agenda? Move approval. Second. Are there any citizen comments? Uh, would you? Uh, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. I didn't we vote. Did vote. Sorry. That's okay. okay. Excuse me. Let me have, let me have the vote on the adoption of the agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Passes four zero. Thank you. Uh, on the donations, Linda, did you read the donations? We'll approve the uh, consent agenda first. May I have a motion for the approval of the consent agenda? Move approval. Second. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Ms. Bryant, seconded by Mr. Kennedy to approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries four zero. And now the recognition. Madam Chairman, there's two, there's two donations on the agenda today. We have approved a thousand dollar donation to Citrus High School from. Catherine Greer and a thousand and a donation to Chris River Middle School from Taylor Rental to install a sidewalk estimated at six hundred dollars in material labor and installation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I think Ms. Wilson. Good afternoon. Good I have afternoon. given you a few um, handouts. The first thing is the budget calendar. Uh, believe it or not, we're looking towards 1617. Um, a few dates on here that are important. Uh, the first workshop that I will uh, present some budget information to you is February 23rd. Um, we will advertise the budget on July 23rd in the paper. Vote on it July 26th. And we will adopt the final budget on September 13th. Those are just some highlights as we move forward. Um, the second page I've given you is just a, a listing of our cash and investments, where we stand right now. Um, we did get our the bulk of our tax dollars in November and December, so we're looking very healthy right now in the way of cash. I'll give you a minute to look over that. Do we anticipate any need for a bridge note like we have in the past? No, you? sir. We've we've made it through that time okay. this would have been the time when we would have needed it and we we made it through Excellent. by the skin of our teeth but we did <laughs> right. any questions on the cash and investments the next thing i'm giving you the third calculation came out actually um december 22nd so the first day we went on vacation it came out uh, we're look our numbers are up and um, about a hundred and forty hundred and forty are FTEs up about and this increased our funding by um, six hundred and thirty four thousand dollars I'll let you look over that for a minute our class size dollars did increase by 114, almost 115 thousand dollars. Our sparsity did go down because our FTE numbers went up. Transportation went up because our numbers went up. Instructional materials. 
We are receiving the virtual education contribution again now that we have our own virtual teacher. I don't know if you remember a few years ago, it would be on the first and second calc, then by the third calculation it would go away. This time the third calculation it appeared, so we should be getting that from now on. Any questions on that? All right. And the last page, which is um, our favorite page, this is our projection of where, um, as of right now, where I'm projecting we will stand at the end of the year after the raises have been taken into effect, the increase in the third calculation, uh, the reduction in fuel costs. I'm looking at about 3.8 or 3.68% undesignated fund balance right now. That's projected to increase? This is, the, this is what I'm projecting. The last column would be the, what I'm projecting where we will end up. The revised budget column doesn't take into consideration our um, reserves that we have to hold according to the state. So I calculate that in in the last column. Any questions on that? All right. That's all I have for today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Bishop, good afternoon. I am here to ask for approval of the instructional support recommendations as outlined in the Goldenrod. I make a motion that we approve the instructional and support recommendations as noted on our handout. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the uh, instructional and support uh, hires as, as listed on the golden line. Thank Good evening. afternoon board members um, today we'd like to talk about um, Citrus High School and a computer science Academy at Citrus High School if we refer back to the strategic plan for Citrus County Schools um, one piece of that says that all students will develop a foundation of knowledge and skills through a rigorous and relevant curriculum that exceeds local state and national expectation closes performance gaps and helps all students realize their full potential. And when you think about that all students and all students realizing their full potential, that begs us to offer 
lots of things so that all of our students can be involved in things. Um, when you stop to think back over the last several years, and they often call me, call me the historian of uh, the group. You know, we've had dual enrollment as an example for many, many years uh, within the district. And over the last several years, we've added AP courses, and we've added AP courses in all of the schools. Some have more uh, AP courses than others, part of it being what is relevant to that particular school. We've had, we have academies, uh, we have the School of Art, um, we have um, at Crystal River the Health Biomedical uh, Academies. Um, we have IB at Lacanto. Um, and while I'm talking about that, we also, there's a lot of questions and often I'm asked about dual enrollment. We send a lot of our students to the CF campus, um, but we are working toward having more classes on campus. Um, right now, we offer at least two courses at each of the uh, schools, each of the high schools. We would love to have more, but of course we have to make sure that we have uh, teachers that are certified and approved by the college. And that typically is a master's in that particular area as well as 18 hours of coursework. So even though there's a lot of people that have master's degrees, they, don't, they aren't always approved by the college to be able to, uh, for their accreditation, they have to take care of that as well. So, um, but what we've been looking at is trying to make sure that we have our schools and have our students able to keep up with the workforce and to be college and career ready. Um, several years ago, the state board added some of those accelerated, acceleration mechanisms to school grades for the high school. Uh, one of those being industry certification. Within Citrus County, we have worked very diligently to get all of our career and technical programs up and moving toward <coughs> industry certification. And when industry certification came into view, it was very important that we meet the standards for the industry certification. That meant we had to have all of our programs at certain software levels, that we had to have um, our programs to where they had the greatest and uh, best equipment, and sometimes that was at a pretty good cost factor. But now that we have those programs up, we now look to expand, um, looking uh, to, uh, We've looked for the last several years at expanding academies now that we have all of our programs kind of up to speed. There's been a state emphasis, and if you listen to a state school board meeting, I understand at the state uh, board meetings that you all attend, you've heard a lot about computer coding. And that is something that we feel that it's time to bring to Citrus County in a bigger way. Um, several years ago, we offered computer sciences within um, Citrus County Schools. However, from the course code directory, they deleted many of the programming courses that were available to Citrus County students. And they took them out of the computer science area, and they said, well, you can just teach them in CTE. The problem was they didn't add any of those courses or those course numbers to the course code directory. They also looked at it as software. They just said, well, you'll use the software that's already been um, afforded to you by companies. So that they told us in CTE and business that we needed to teach the students how to use software, not necessarily how to write software or software type programs. You introduce then uh, tablets, etc., and now there's a call for apps. And it's 
but our students should be able to write those. So that's one of the reasons that suddenly we have seen a big emphasis back on moving back to coding. For years, Citrus High School had a business academy, and as we started going through looking at um, courses and academies, etc., cetera, um, as I've upgraded the, to, for industry certification, one of the things also was going on was the Citrus High School administration was looking to see what they could do to revive or redefine the business academy at Citrus High. And I'll let Mr. Hilbert talk about that in just a couple of moments. Um, but what we do want it to do is that we want to offer students um, for in Citrus County the best educational opportunity for one of the fastest growing career fields, and that is computer science. So why computer science? Um, it is considered a high salary, a high, high growth field in Florida and within the U.S. Uh, it's a program that certainly has been encouraged by the State Board of Education. Um, there is an easy access to professional development and resources um, when we do a partnership with uh, several STEM-related agencies, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few moments. And um, while there's a lot of controversy about, uh, there is a legislation that is uh, being introduced uh, about making coding, coding as a substitute for foreign language. Now whether that passes or not, that does, doesn't really make a difference. Computer science is here to stay. If you stop to think about every aspect now is somehow related to computer science. You go to the doctor's office, there's a computer. You go to uh, anything with building, etc. there's computers. There's computers everywhere. It is part of our life and we really feel that we should have our students ready for that piece of their life. Mr. Hilbert? Well, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, if I haven't seen you, Happy New Year. Uh, as you know, this is my, uh, in my third year of being at Citrus High School, and I've always been very impressed with the, the staff and the students and so forth and working through uh, our programs uh, educationally and so forth. So I wanted to just kind of share with you what we have done at this time. As, as I see that you had that on your iPads or computers, uh, basically, what we decided to do is we got in contact with our uh, SAC committee, our department heads, and then also our, um, we, the, the committee that we formed to take a look at to see what is it that we could offer as an extension to enhance students' uh, education at Citrus High School. And basically, uh, we did do a survey monkey, it went out in November, and uh, the other middle schools were very uh, accepted of that and we sent that out and we got those results back. I would tell you we offered probably six different kinds of options and then also we gave the students an option of putting something in there. Computer science came up as one of the top choices of students uh, of, of choices at that time. Uh, the certification, if we were to go through the computer science, you can see there that they, uh, what they can get as far as certification programs, everything from Microsoft Office to uh, drafting uh, is a related area of uh, certificate, uh, certification also can be obtained, uh, internet business and so forth through that program. These are the required courses. The, the top three are 18-week uh, courses. They are one-credit courses. The other three down below there are half-credit courses. So there's a total of seven, which is the computation and problem solving. And then these were what we thought would be great electives for those students, even though the digital informational technology one is all, one that all of our freshmen would take. I would like to just share with you in our discussion that we had had regarding offering the computer science, we are looking for 
very, you know, a rubric that would enable us to look at different students uh, in this to enter into this program. May not necessarily be some a student that may be in one pro program or another program. Maybe a kid that's middle of the road type of a kid that's very good in math, good computers, and those kinds of things. And that's kind of what we would be looking at at this point. Kind of our next steps, um, we wanted to share with you today as um, about what our research has, has brought to us and where we really are and to go forward. Um, we would like to partner with Project Lead the Way. This is a nonprofit organization that helps to, to establish STEM-related fields in our schools. We have worked with this particular company, or it's actually a conglomeration of many, many companies to help STEM-related fields. Um, the great thing about Project Lead the Way, we've worked with them with the biomedical at Crystal River, we worked with them with engineering, um, the pieces of it um, is that they provide training opportunities. Um, we have a lot of wonderful, great teachers in Citrus County. But when you have something very new and very innovative, and Dr. Connors can tell you that for the students in biomedical, there's a lot of things that go on in there that even the best of the teachers would not have thought to do those things necessarily in class, but because they have been through the training that Project Lead the Way offers to us, then we can do cutting edge things for our students. Um, the other piece with Project Lead the Way is that they uh, tell us uh, the materials that we need. Uh, we love to have their training in state right now um, until Project Lead the Way grows further. Typically, our teachers would have to uh, go out of state for training. There, the other things that we need to do um, is to outline what type of application and student selection process, another piece of, of our next steps, um, to promote uh, the computer science program. Um, we would like our kind of target starting point is to select 50 students to begin the program for the 16-17 school year. Some things that we've looked, talked about is attendance, behavior, academic history, and some of those pieces, not necessarily the best and uh, the, the top of everything, but to make sure uh, that we are targeting students who are truly committed to the program. Um, we would offer digital information technology and intro to computer science and programming next year for the students. We also want to explore volunteer internship opportunities within Citrus County for our third and fourth year students. Um, we believe that there's a lot of things that this program could offer uh, out to the community through either paid or unpaid type partnerships. Uh, another yes, what, piece, um, what age students are we talking about, the 50 students? Where are they coming from? 10th <coughs> grade, 11th grade? We would probably, we would start definitely with 8th graders coming in as 9th graders, okay. and we would probably be accepting some current 9th graders as well. Because what we want them to do is to be able to finish the program before they leave. And if they started as a junior or senior, then that would be filling up slots that then others wouldn't be able to replace. Let me follow that by asking how you get this information to the students. Well, that's part of our piece is to, to what type of a marketing plan. I know that the folks from um, <coughs> Citrus have have talked about developing a course for orientation. Um, when they have their orientation night, they certainly, I'm sure, will have a lot of um, things to talk to the students about of what, the who, how, what, when, and where. Um, 
once we've kind of made this decision, we're still working on, we know that we've got a lot of work to do in the next month and a half to get those pieces together. But you'll be presenting this to the other high school students, not just the other. And the middle schools. And the middle, excuse me, middle schools. And so someone will be going over there and be presented by, they're going to tell me. Is that what you're saying? Well, again, like, okay, we, don't, we don't, we're not that far as far as how, mm -hmm. how many students, you know, I think Mr. Hilbert's going to want to focus, first of all, on his own population mm -hmm. at Citrus. And then we have other questions we have to answer. If you expand it to that, are you providing transportation? You're not providing transportation. You know, the, it's important that the program be able to walk before it runs full speed. And, and the program has to have a starting point. That's why we want to start the program. Uh, you know, we hope the program grows to a few hundred students, but we can't start day one with a few hundred students. So uh, some of those questions may be premature at this stage and how many students will come from other schools. Uh, I think Mr. Hilbert's first first obligation is going to be to try to see how many students at his school are interested in that program, and they've already done some of those surveys and have identified some of those. So that would be our first priority. And one of the other um, things to do as the program grows, by the time the students are juniors or seniors, we would also be looking at articulating the program with. Um, could be with WTC, it could be with uh, other state colleges, et cetera, so that our students can get credit for what they know. Uh, the Career Pathways program with CF, um, we have to be a little bit further down the road with being able to, to give them course outlines, et cetera, and they take a look and see what type of credit that they will give them as articulated credit. There's also articulation statewide that if a student passes um, certain industry certifications that they can receive credit at the state college system as well. Some estimated program cost as we go through this. We would pay a $2,500 participation fee with Project Lead the Way, but what we would get for that $2,500 is all of the software that we are needed with for the program. That includes, I believe, four different type of software that um, will help to help us with writing the computer programs, etc. And the funding source from that would be through the Perkins funds for CTE expansion. Um, approximately $5,000 staff training in the summer that is typically out-of-state travel that we can pay for through the district CAPE funds. Um, approximately ten to $15,000 for Android tablets with the Python, Python software for writing code that could come from the vocational capital outlay. Um, the reason for the Android tablets, um, the Apple has proprietary software and they do not allow as access to be able to do. Um, what the software that we have would be on desktops and students would write apps, etc. And then the Android tablets themselves would be for the students to test their apps in the classroom. Um, it is recommended as a, a two students per one Android tablet. Um, so an estimated 17.5 to 22.5 estimation for the, our first year cost. Um, many of the things would still be, there would not be as much reoccurring training, of course, would be. Um, we would have the participation fee because each year for until we get the program established. Um, if we decided that we would um, provide busing, et cetera, for out-of-zone students. That cost is to be determined because we don't know exactly how many students and we don't know um, where they live, et cetera, and whether or not that would already be something that would be a transportation cost as just two students on a bus, two or three students more on a bus that is already uh, going.
but wouldn't you agree that that is the goal or the plan uh, long range is to have this as an academy that's offered to all um, incoming high school students in the county? Wouldn't that be? That's what this board has to decide. Well, I mean, is that what the administration, uh, I mean, that sounds to me like that's where we're going, is to be able to offer an academy, just like we do with the Health Academy at Christopher River High School, where any student in the county can go to that Health Academy, uh, just like we offer the IB program at Lakanto High School, any student in the county can go to the IB program. I would certainly like to hope that any student in the county eventually would be able to go to the Computer Science Academy um, at Citrus High School. So, and I think Mike said, when I, when I was asking that question earlier, he said, we have to wait and see how it progresses at Citrus High before we jump, you know, the gun there and, and uh, Absolutely. Have it. So when we see how it progresses, if, if it makes, it looks like it's, it's going well, then there's another step that we take. We, we would not, we wouldn't keep kids from going, from wanting to go to that, you know, allowing students to go back and forth with programs. We have students going to Canto for art because they want to go to the Art Academy. We have students going to Citrus High because they want to take drafting there. So we have that, we would not deny that students wanting to go there. Uh, you know, the question is, are we going to try to recruit heavily from all the other schools to go to that program? I would not say right now that that's going to be the top priority is to recruit to get 200 kids yep. in there. And that it's going to be to start that program, get a good foundation, and get all everything in place before we do that. Right. The difference is, is whether we're talking about an academy or a magnet program, and they are different models. A magnet program is what IB is. A magnet program is what the Health Academy became. The Health Academy existed as an academy for, I think, well over a decade before it really moved into being a magnet program. If we are looking at simply adding a magnet program to Citrus High because there's some equitable reason, um, I think that's a very different question and one that has to then involve things like, as Mr. Mullen um, stressed, we have capacity issues that have to be then looked at. We have to look at impact of other programs, including other magnet programs, that could be potentially impacted. Um, I think what has been appealed here, and that was a question that I had, was are we talking about an academy or a magnet program? Because in academy, we have, at many of our schools, and I, I hope that a computer science, as I think the state has shown and as I think the need is, a lot of these are things that I think we're going to see that our other high schools are going to be adding these programs, just like Crystal River has a business academy, just like uh, Citrus High had a business academy. Crystal River has a drafting academy. Citrus has a drafting academy because they need to service their students and the broadest way of doing that is by having these programs there. Um, one, there's usually two reasons why a magnet school is put at a specific school. One is the location, as we found with IB, it was centrally located. The other reason is a situation like Crystal River where in Biomed, when we added that to the Health Academy, there was a need to increase the capacity and the draw into Crystal River High School because, frankly, we had a, a large number of students at Lacanto and at Citrus High. So I think, I mean, it's, this is exactly, as we know, right on target of the things that our students need. But if we're talking about an academy or a magnet school, sometimes that's going to be a very different conversation, I think, as a board level that we're going to be having. And I don't think we're going to know that until we start seeing the success that Citrus High has with their program. I don't think any of us would deny that um, all of the schools may at some point in time want to uh, offer uh, computer science classes in their schools, especially depending upon what legislation, et cetera, does. But I, I do believe that it is very wise to start at one school, make sure that we are successful there, and then either expand at that particular school or branch out to others. Well, we're not going to know that until really Citrus High starts doing some of theirs. Correct. Until we know, you know, right now we're hoping for a couple hundred applications or at least to fill our 50 spots. You know, we might be bombarded with applications. We might not. Um, well, that, that brings up a great question, though. 
what does this student look like? That's what one of those things. If you notice, um, I see it there, but I'm hoping that you all have given that some thought. We've had several pieces, uh, uh, several conversations about. Uh, that's one of our next steps: is to sit down and to to clearly identify what type of rubric, um, and that's the our goal is to have a rubric to be able to judge pieces of. We have collected uh, the Health Academy application. We have uh, collected the IB application, what the positives, et cetera. I um, also have an application from a, a school that is working on computer science in Marion County. So I want to, to pull all of those pieces together so that we can outline. Um, I think Mr. Bittner will tell you from the very first time that uh, we outlined what we originally thought for um, the IB students that the, the next year, we definitely modified that a little bit further because we want to make sure that the students that we um, have are successful in the program because we know that sometimes that first phase of the students going through, uh, we want them to have a positive experience. Um, we don't want to um, unduly take students out, but we also want to make sure that it's something that all students that we put in have the opportunity to be successful. One of the things, though, that it looks like or that concerns me and that I hope um, we look at is we have the IB program, which is targeting students that are headed to college. We have the Health Academy that has, again, it's changed. I think initially, it would, I would say that it was more career-oriented, but I think over the years, that's become more of a college pathway. Um, the students that are going there typically are going on to college. We have the Academy of Environmental Science, and most of those students are students that are going on to college. So the only thing that, that I am, again, I would say is if we're looking at magnet programs, or even if we're just looking at programs, my concern is that we also provide opportunities for the 30% of our students that aren't going to college, but are going directly into a career. And that's really where computer science really seems to be a, a very targeted group. Um, that are going directly into the workplace. I, I would say that, that if we are looking to develop another program for college-bound or predominantly college-bound students, that makes me a little nervous that we are leaving out a, a large segment. I didn't see it as a well, specifically for college now. I saw it. I won't say it specifically for that, but I don't want to say we have a program that's not for college bound it's because so even WTC is a program that's for right. college bound students. Uh, even though it's a vocational school, it's students that are college bound can take electives and get certification in the fields that they're interested in through WTC. So even though I do agree that we it is a program by which students can go straight into the workforce, certainly if there are students that want to go beyond that, uh, so, kind of like with the Health Academy. There are students that leave the Health Academy that can go straight into the workforce. And then there are, the, there are those that want to uh, major in that at college and go one step further. Uh, or go to college while they're going through the workforce. We talked about that earlier. So I see it as both. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that it would be one more than the other. Academic thing. history was the, it didn't, it seemed too ominous, was it? something you know and that's why i say what does the person look like is this that we're looking for that kid that you know is, is you know and i can say this being maybe a little bit of that kid is the geek who's you know computer minded and, and is and is really right now more interested in developing an app than they are necessarily putting in a college application and, and that's some of the things that we want to try to figure out how to put that mold the academic history the only, what we're really saying when we said that is to just really take a look at that student. Um, one thing that we've learned any time that we've had a computer type program, um, back even several years ago, 
if you're going to go with programming, you have to have a student who understands what parentheses are all about um, in math. So you're probably letting um, a student, looking at a student that has some math ability, and we're trying to define that right now. Um, one of the things we've talked about an essay to try to see where the students are really looking at. We're not saying that it has to be the student who's already done all of algebra uh, one and algebra two and geometry by the time they get to high school. That's not what we're actually saying. But what we're saying of it is if a student ha is a DF student and unless we can figure out that there's a way to turn that particular student on, then we want to make sure that we are giving opportunities to students who want to be there. I would think that this program would be welcomed by both students that are looking to go on to college and those who are going to possibly find a job, a vocational type program, and I would hope the program would be tailored to both those types of students. If you allow me to go on to continue, because we're interrupting your presentation. Go ahead. If we'll go on. There's several different uh, names of, of jobs, but the next slide, and it's a little bit hard to see, but what we did was we took the job titles from, and this comes directly from the state, and looked at the percentage of change and need, and this is put out by the Economic Development Council, um, of what change, and all of those you'll notice are positive change in the requirements in the next eight years. Also, the number of job openings in Florida in the next eight years. Um, the average hourly wage, and this was done last year, so that's how much per hour that the students are made and then the education level required. And you will notice that the majority of the things that are listed here are um, not necessarily four-year college. And, and we understand that. Um, are there some students available to get a job right out of high school? Probably because having a industry certification is a very strong piece of it as well. Um, with the number of job openings and the unfilled jobs currently out there, if you have an industry certification, you already have one foot in the door. Um, in some cases, what happens is businesses are so um, desirous of having the students that they would then help them to even further their education. So we really think that <clears throat> you'll notice not every one of those is bachelor and master's degrees. And I went through and truly looked at what type of jobs. And I can tell you that with all of the things that we looked at for Citrus High School, that wasn't the case for everything else that we looked at. I mean, truly, computer science, and that was one of the reasons that we really focused on computer science, was it is for the students who just want a little bit more of education. If you look at it now, they estimate between 85 and 90 percent of the jobs that are going to be available in the next eight years are going to have to have some type of training beyond high school. We know that that's a fact. Okay, so what we want to do is give the students a leg up. As I said, we want to have the career pathways program so that what they learn in high school that they can get credit for it and then be able to walk into. But I certainly would think that any of the jobs which are paying anywhere from 26 to almost $40 an hour, they would be very happy um, to be able to do. And, and you and I know, because we serve on CTE committees now for a number of years, and, and um, this is certainly more the lines, and that's, this is exactly what I, I'm really saying is, if this is a model of the type of students you're trying to look for, it's a cross-section. It doesn't really meet, um, it, it's, it's a more broader uh, net, and that encourages me. Uh, 
in, in that. So that's that's really what I, I was trying to understand. Because when I see academic history, and I see, you know, what we're trying to do, the business academy that you were, in essence, trying to um, revitalize or replace was academy. I think that that largely did that. It was it wasn't just going after college bound kids. It was a mixture, um, and so. That to me is a, an appropriate replacement uh, to that. Well, like I said, we want to focus on jobs that we know that have a growth of to anywhere from 12 to to 20 percent or or more, and we wanted it to be in Florida. We didn't want it to look at that you have to go outside of of the state. So that was our other prime focus. And I think, Mr. Hilbert, you can correct me. I do think they're prepared to uh, entertain students from other schools that are interested in the academy sure. next year in their first year. Okay. So they're not ruling that out. But again, we're trying to start with a smaller number so we get things in place correctly. Uh, and then later on down the road, if there's 600 students interested in this type of a program, then we'd be crazy not to run it at more than one high school. Uh, but right now, we have to build a demand and once the demand is built then we will uh, we'll meet that need. And I think as you started it said that you were looking for a replacement to the business academy which was there previously. That's an infrastructure that again um, we had business academies at other schools. Um, some schools it, it makes more sense than it does at other schools. Um, one question though that I have is you talked about courses and you mentioned seven courses um, that they would be required. I'm trying to figure out how that fits into a schedule or, or how many courses is a, is a student going to take? Several of those are half credit courses. So it would be that they would take two half credit or maybe three half credit courses during their year. The first year, um, as we said, we are targeting uh, two credits, uh, trying to get the students in, get them moving. Uh, the next year, probably two, and then some of the half credit within an option uh, for for a, a senior year kind of capstone type program. Again, as we go, we've got to build. Okay, wait a minute. At five o'clock, we have a, a presentation, so it's about eight minutes before then. If you, if you want to, I wind I up. basically am done, other than any questions, etc., that you have. Okay, did it? Is anyone else in the percent or, or just the youth person? <laughs> this is for information purposes and to answer any questions and to uh, go back and get any more information that any board members want us to do. Uh, at this point, you know, the only commitment would be from the board, we're on the right track, would be there is, you can see there is some funding tied to it. So from budget purposes, uh, it, is the board supportive of us going in this direction? continue to move in this direction because you will have to approve a budget in July or September that two-month process uh, by which we we allocate some resources and you saw what we anticipate those resources to be on the power plant. I said Gil's been working on this for years this is not something that was started last week so no but in, uh, in 2009 and 10 we, we weren't looking at anything we were looking to try to keep right. everything <laughs> It's been a rough few, we few years, so we're, we're starting to come out of that, well, so now we're charging for each year. We see that. We've been doing it for so long, and, and I, I would think our other board members are wanting to see the fruition here to explore. explore I'm very more. excited about this. I think it's we're I right on, it on track. <laughs> You've heard me talk about this for Citrus High School, and I, I'm just uh, I'm glad to know the work that's gone into it. Mr. Hilbert and his staff are all here, yes. and they're supportive of this, and uh, we're going to meet um, a a need uh, for all of our students, I hope eventually in, in this county, dealing with computer science and technology. And um, I'm just, uh, I'd like to thank you guys for putting all this work into this program. One question I do have is, uh, do you foresee um, these computer science classes being open for all students um, at the high school, or will it just be for those in the academy? I think that'll com that'll completely depend upon enrollment. I, okay. Students in academy will have a priority, <coughs> but again, if we have if we have space in a classroom and a student has the prerequisites to get in that classroom, we would never keep a student from having an opportunity to take those courses. So. Because if we were to offer an AP computer science class um, and there were uh, 
available seats for other students. Obviously, that'd be the way to go. We, we survive by keeping classrooms full. That's how we. That's how we make a living. So, if uh, we don't have 20 kids in our uh, in the academy that want to take an AP class, and we have 15 and five or 10 more from outside of the academy, there would be no reason not to allow them to take that course as long as they had the prerequisites to to take it. And also the FTE funding for industry certifications, there is some um, funding that is available for when certification. A, when a student passes an industry certification, depending upon whether or not it is either a, it's going to be a point one or a point two, and that is basically dependent upon whether or not it has a state articulation agreement for that industry certification. So that's the piece of it. So as the students pass, then that will also help uh, for um, students uh, to help generate funds. Um, and they, the industry certification has to be on the CAPE list. Um, and then the same thing of it is, you talked about um, the AP courses. Of course, if a student receives a three, four, or five, then there was also be funding to come back to. And that, Specifically with CAPE, it has to be spent on the program that earns it. So that's a, a very strong piece of it. Um, as I said, in the last several years, Mr. Blocker has taught me well that make sure that whatever we're proposing that we have funds. And now that we have the industry certification um, programs up to par, then we have a little bit more of our Perkins funds to be able to to be able to work toward getting something uh, started in another school, um, and and each of the schools, that's the piece that we're trying to do is make sure that we have solid foundation before we move further. Well, thank you very much. And I just have to, I just have something too, um, okay, and I know we have a time certain, but. The, the concern too is is that as we add these, um, what do we lose at a school in order to start another class? So if we're having AP computer science, and that's not a question for today, but the cognizant of, of what classes then, you know, we're not adding staff, I'm assuming then that means that there may be a course that we have to drop as a result of it. That's not necessarily wrong, that just may be that there's a more appropriate course. And then the other thing I think, board, that we have to be very cognizant of is that um, if this develops into a more magnet program, um, we have some big things coming down the pike. IB, for example, um, we may find that that's going to become an IB school because that's the necessity that's coming forward. That's going to be a cost to this board that we're going to have to look at. We also are, are finding that there's a number of our students that are stopping after PIPs. They're not going into IB. And so our model of funding has changed there. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but that is also a little different than the model we currently have. And, and we need to look at that. Thank you very much for that input. Okay. Gail, thank you so much, too. Uh, for all the years you've worked on this, and we'll see what's happening in the future. Okay, now, um, Ms. Phillips, just came in a few minutes ago, so we were we were planning to see what we could do if you did not show up, and I was going to do it, and then also Polly was going to do it, so now Polly has your, your rewards. And Okay, uh, what did the, tell the group here that this is uh, Connie Phillips. She was a teacher at uh, the Canto Art School for many, many years. And I was about eight years the liaison between the uh, students, art students, and uh, the Arts Festival. Connie, thank heavens, took over that position. <coughs> her is taking it over for the future. <laughs> and so uh, this is her uh, first appearance before you to uh, as the liaison. And she's going to present some awards to the students who uh, received the awards of excellence. Right. And, and I, uh, Sam and I are going to go up and stand with you too, so oh, we're not going to do anything. We're just going to stand. Uh, I, I would like to say that uh, in my experience working for the school system for 30 years, um, I, I feel very honored 
to be here now because um, I, I very quickly learned, because I got very active statewide, very quickly learned how much support there is in this county for the arts. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate it, and I always felt it. I always felt that I was supported, and um, I really appreciate that. Um, and I think that we're an exceptional county. <laughs> I really do. <clears throat> so, yes, after Linda wrangled me into taking her place on the <laughs> Festival of the Arts um, Committee, I'm uh, now the school liaison, and uh, we have this program, this wonderful, we, we developed this wonderful program about, uh, rather than giving the kids um, uh, first, second, and third place awards, we, uh, uh, ha we have hired uh, judges to come in from University of Florida or sometimes uh, South Florida University of South Florida and they go through and they put uh, these awards they we call them awards of excellence because they have selected these pieces saying that these are worthy to be let's talk about these let's critique these and then after lunch we go up and we have this wonderful critique and uh, Sam has been there for it, and uh, Linda's been there, and, uh, and it's just such a wonderful experience, and, and we've turned it into this huge learning experience, and um, I'm very, very proud of this program. So um, I wanted to call, uh, have Chris take pictures for us, <laughs> and I'm going to um, recognize all the uh, art teachers at the high schools and have them come up. Um, and we'll start with uh, La Canto High School. And <laughs> so David Brown and uh, Holly Hilgert and Bill Rubar. Uh, anybody who's here can <laughs> come up. And um, shall I have maybe have Dave give out the certificates as the kids come up? Yeah, I can call the names. Call the names. Okay, and the students, the La Canto High School's artists, Jake. Clark, Dang Huang, Emma Holmes Ray, Ashton Horace, Keely Rice, Kate Sisko, and Zoe Cerency, and Ali Thomason. Okay. <laughs> And I asked the students if, the, if it was possible for them to bring their artworks that they were uh, receive their awards of excellence on. Um, Where are you going? I'm looking at the project. Did you get Left it in the car. Okay, from Citrus High School. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. You want to answer a picture first and then all of He's coming back. Is it even It's sitting in the Chris, you want some in the middle? He's got it. Okay, and I'm sorry, and I left out Sydney Butts. Uh, Citrus High School, Nancy, uh, the teachers are Nancy Boudreaux and Philip Journey. And the students are Savannah Boudreaux and Tegan Hennick and Andrea Mundrano. How did I do on that? Okay. Okay. And I'm thinking we could get. Why don't we do separate school shots? All right, I right. just, okay. Right. All right. So we do Citrus High. Okay, Mr. Gangler wants to do separate school shots. No, we've already got Lacanto. So thank you, Lacanto. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hilbert is 
getting in for dessert. Well, I've got a couple of them. Oh, good. You'll have to do And the administrators. <laughs> Foundation for supporting the arts, and especially for the big tents. Years ago, art teachers you would have to go on Saturday morning to set up and sit there all day and then take down. And, and, the, and they, the festival wanted us to come up, set it up for two days. And we said, We're too exhausted, we can't do it two days. <laughs> so um, they came and said, Well, how, how could you do it for two days? And we said, Well, it be a tent. And so the um, the Citrus Education Foundation and, and uh, Sam Hill, they come up and got us some tents. And now we go and we set up on Friday, leave it up all weekend, and it's just wonderful. And so I, I hope that uh, next November, everybody can stop by and see the school zone. <laughs> Connie, thank you so much. <laughs> and Connie's been such a big part of art in this county. She's a, the guru of art. <laughs> thank you. She's delivering a baby. Connie's up. Connie, it's about that. Ms. Powers, we're not finished with our curriculum update. We, oh, okay. Uh, if, uh, Mr. Simon uh, would like to briefly explain the action that took place at the state board uh, in relationship to the school grades and that criteria. Let me, uh, Mr. Sam, would you wait five minutes to take a uh, five minute recess and then we'll be right straight back. Thank you. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay.